<laughs> oh, welcome to Getter Trash Christmas Bonus Ode 2015 Edition. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. My name is Eric. I am Jason. We, uh, this is our seventh Christmas special. Is it? Yeah. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> but we missed last year's. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, so seven and eight years. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we we decided to uh, to get together and put together another special episode for you. And here we are, and you can hear a dog chewing a bone loudly in the background. <laughs> it, it's the sound of Christmas. Most people think of like sleigh bells or like a crackling <laughs> fire. I think of a dog chewing on a bone. Sure, and perhaps. A siren or two. We heard right. a couple of those. Motorcycles. Lots oh, of yeah. That. Or at least... It ain't Christmas if you're not out on your hog. That's true. Well, it is also... It's not Christmas unless it's 70-some degrees out. <laughs> Which it is. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, I hope that doesn't pick up too much in the background. Uh, <laughs> but it uh, should be noted that once again, we are not recording at uh, Gutter Trash HQ. We are at uh, Jason's house again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah welcome, welcome back. <laughs> this is our second time here, I believe. Yep. Now the uh, the first episode didn't turn out too bad, uh, mostly because the dog slept the entire time. <laughs> yeah, that's the main reason we're we're here. Actually, is because I worked uh, my volunteer job and my regular job today. Right. And like, but you actually, usually do though. But I don't usually work as many hours. Right. And uh, and so like I didn't want to leave my my mom to deal with this dog, especially since she's sick right now. She sure, has a, she has a <clears throat> sinus infection going. Yeah. So, yeah. So I was like, I was like, we should do this show here, so I can, you know, make sure the dog behaves right. and doesn't keep mom awake. Right. Which is noble, and I understand that. It's, she's such a cute dog. <laughs> she's very adorable when she's not being insane. Yep. And right now, she's technically not being insane. She's yeah. just chewing on a bone. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of adorable. Yeah. It's what dogs do. It's, it, it is what dogs do. <laughs> I don't think what's helping the situation is that we actually have a guest here with us. Oh. I think I think he's instigating... A lot of her behavior today. <laughs> I think he's making it worse. She's super excitable. Much like Edna, I'm super excited when our guest is around. It's true, yeah. Uh, he livens up everything. It's true. I have that effect. <laughs> Let's bring him on in. Yeah, we got uh, we got a Matt Brassfield with us. Hello, hey. everyone. Hey, what's up, Matt Brassfield? Not much. How are you guys doing? Not bad. Pretty well. Pretty so, well. Uh, it's been a while since you've been on the show. It has indeed. Yeah. This is the first time I've been on Gutter Trash, not at the headquarters, but actually sitting in Jason, the Jason Young Estate, watching a dog <laughs> chewing on a bone. So it's been yeah. it's quite mesmerizing. <laughs> we kind of wanted to build up to it. We didn't want to just, you know, bring you here the first time. Yeah. Oh, I understand. It's also one of our rare occasions where we've uh, brought you in not on Halloween. I know. This is like the opposite holiday of Halloween. I think the only <laughs> only non-Halloween episode I've been on was The Wrestler. And that yeah. was like at the beginning. Oh, wow. Yeah. You've been on others, I think. Oh, that's true, because I think I was on the... You guest hosted episode. when uh, Jason wasn't around. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, you were on the 200th episode as well, so... With Steve, but, who got up and left in yep. the middle of it. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, I mean, usually you're here for Halloween. Well, you're you're a spooky guy. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. into you're into the horror. I think we've established you are pretty much like the Santa of Halloween. It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> if there's a movie you guys usually want to see, you guys come to me. If it's a horror film, yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. Uh, Which is kind of funny because I think that's why I'm here today as well. <laughs> kind of. Well, I mean, we did want to have you on as a guest because uh, I tried it a while. 
Huh? We've tried a couple we, times. We before. tried, and uh, you failed us. Mm-hmm. Uh, on, He's a busy dude. On more ways than one. Hey, no, I look at it as you guys wanted me on uh, what was it, possession? Yes. So you left out there. I think I won. Yeah. In that think, one. Well, yeah, <laughs> but you failed us because a you couldn't find the movie in the first place. It's true. It's true. B you couldn't get your goddamn schedule together to it's be true. with us. My schedule is crazy. And C. You failed us by not warning us that it was going to be a horrible movie that we would not be able to get through. <laughs> well, I'm surprised Jason didn't enjoy it. <laughs> the possession? The yeah. possession? Yeah. It's, it's yeah, up your it alley. Is, it is kind of a, one of his movies. One of my movies? Yeah. I like artsy movies, <laughs> but... <laughs> oh, uh, for the record, the dog has moved closer. <laughs> I like artsy movies, but that one was just awful. <laughs> But we're not here to talk about an awful movie. <laughs> or are we? <laughs> I guess we're going to find out. Because I'm thinking there might be some disparate opinions here. I would imagine so. Uh, we uh, we watched a movie. A Christmas movie. A, a Christmas movie of sorts. It's got Christmas in the title. Right. It's from 1974 and it is called Black Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very... It's a very, uh, yeah, it sounds like it's a black metal Norwegian <laughs> Christmas movie, but sure. You should also throw in that it was directed by Bob well, Clark. Well, we're going to get to all that shit. You hold your goddamn horses. And what is Bob Clark also no. known for? No. Come on, say it. No. Say it. No. Say it. No. You know you want to. No, I don't, because I was going to save this for last, goddammit. <laughs> Come on, say it. Nope. Dance. Nope. We are going to talk all about him later. First we're going to talk about the movie. I don't know if I can hold off on the talk about it. <laughs> I, I don't know. No. All right, fine. God <laughs> damn it. I hate you, Matt Rysfield. <laughs> you know, you host your own podcast. I do, I do. And you have very regimented rules about how you run that thing. <laughs> but we're loosey-goosey here. <laughs> I know. That's why I brought it up now. <laughs> So who, who directed this movie? Uh, the director of Black Christmas is a gentleman uh, who sadly is no longer with us, but uh, he goes by the name of Bob Clark. Okay. Uh, Bob Clark, uh, he's definitely famous for having directed a movie, uh, but to me, uh, I think my favorite movie of his is, is a little zombie movie called Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, indeed. But a uh, group of kids who go out to an island and uh, they they perform some sort of ritual, which brings the dead to life. And the uh, the leader of this group is a, is a guy by the name of Alan who wears the most fantastic pants that have ever been worn in <laughs> cinema history. In <laughs> fact, me and Eric had long discussions about writing a children shouldn't play with dead things too that revolved around these said pants. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They are amazing pants. I'll show you what the pants look like later. <laughs> You're going to wear them. Oh, Next time God. You come over. I would love to own a pair of these pants. <laughs> so, I didn't realize the guy's name then, but I do know the other movie that this guy directed. Oh. The famous movie. Uh, yeah. Christmas Story. Yes. Another Christmas classic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Ralphie, uh, you know. Uh, yep. You'll, well, you'll put your eye out. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Oh man, our Enough own, is out of control. Yeah, the dog is our in, second guest. <laughs> yeah, is in the Valentine. <laughs> She's just very excited. Whenever Matt Rasfield shows up, uh, she gets very excited. I don't think she calms down at all. Like every time I'm over here, she's riled up. Every time <laughs> we try to give her a softer toy. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure it's super squeaky. Uh, here, show this. Show this. Okay. Now I'm back. <laughs> I gave the dog a softer toy. And uh, she's just stopped playing. <laughs> so Black Christmas. Oh, okay, yeah, she's you, just going to bite me instead. Never mind. <laughs> you've, uh, you've seen this before. I have indeed. Numerous times. Yeah, this is, uh, I believe, our first time seeing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
should note, <laughs> this is not the movie that I originally wanted to see for, for our special. Today. All right, that's true. Uh, a, a friend of mine said that uh, I should see Silent Night, Deadly Night. And I was like, you know what? I've never seen that. I don't know why I've never seen it. It sounds great. You know, we could do a gutter trash special about it. I texted that to you, and you responded with, I am not watching that piece of shit movie. <laughs> So Jason basically vetoed it. Is I, what the bottom line is. I don't know that I've ever vetoed a movie before. Uh, I mean, I don't consider that an official veto. Right, right. Yeah. But if you would have picked it, I would have vetoed it. Right, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I do hate that movie. And Matt Brassfield's theory, and actually my friend's theory as well, is that maybe you're confusing it with Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. But I don't you know, know. We, we can't say for sure there's a dog on my back. <laughs> Literally... <laughs> On my back. <laughs> I, so, is, so everyone, everyone says, you know, you must be talking about Silent Night, Deadly Night too. Is this like, is it, is it like a thing where you know the first one is just amazing? I don't know, the, the first one's one a solid horror film. The second one is what Generally Troll reviled, Two. Yeah, yeah okay. it's like Troll Two to Troll One. Kind of thing. It's like an internet sensation. There's like ridiculous lines. There is uh, maybe it was the second one I watched, but honestly, have so little interest in finding out <laughs> if I'm thinking of the right movie. But, or not. That's fair enough. But yeah. the first one has a really cool scene because the, the the guy works at a toy store and they have a whole display of mass or uh, uh, Star Wars like oh, toys yeah. from Return of the Jedi oh, still in the package. That's, that's pretty cool. You need to see that. That's I worth know. it. I don't know what movie. <laughs> Silent Night, Deadly Night. No, the Return of the, the yeah. Gem- what was Gemini. That? Gemini, Return of the Gemini. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Star Wars <laughs> Episode Three: Return of Giuseppe. You know, uh, it's yeah, a good one. Yeah, I don't know. never heard of it. It's weird. Yeah. Right. Movies referencing other movies. Well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so once uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night was rejected, uh, I was like, you know what? There's another. Christmas themed horror movie that I've never seen that I should and it's a Black Christmas. I'd never heard of it. You had never heard of it. You said you were down with it. I told Matt Brassfield and he was like the original, right? Because there is a remake. Is there really? Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen it. Yeah. Have you? Yes. Okay. It's just a slasher film, basically. Okay. I mean, there's no mystery. There's no guessing who anything is. It's just a straight slasher film, right. and it's mediocre at best. I seem to recall it not getting a lot of love. So, yeah. Yeah. Was it recently? Like a couple yeah, of years? It's yeah. Probably, 10 years? Yeah, okay. probably within 10 years. Okay. Uh, hmm. But yeah, so I said, of course, the original. You know? And uh, so here we are, and we watched... Uh, <laughs> Edna watched it with us, so she's she's commenting. She has a right. You know, she has just as much as right as Mr. Brassfield. No bite. No bite. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> but yeah, we watched Black Christmas, and and, uh, and uh, it was star studded. It was star studded. Yeah, Margot Kidder. Margot Kidder looking fifty years older than everyone else in the cast. <laughs> And pretty much playing herself. And playing a sorority girl. Yeah. A drunk sorority girl. As herself. <laughs> <laughs> a chain smoking alcoholic. Margot Kidder. <laughs> she did great. She was pretty good in this. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen any non Lois Lane Margot Kidder movies. Really? Yeah. Uh, Amityville Horror. I never saw that. I was going to say, because she's. she's just like a normal housewife on that one. So, I, I, mean, I thought that was Karen good. Allen. No. Margot Kidder plays, and she plays Kathy Lux. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Wasn't she in Raiders of the Lost Ark? That was yeah. Karen Allen. Oh, was no. it? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, that's not Margot Kidder. Oh, okay. She was in her Karen mate. Allen is the prettier Margot Kidder. And, huh. and Margot Kidder's famous roles are Superman, the Superman series, and Amityville Horror and Black Christmas. So then is Margot Kidder known as the drunker Karen Allen? <laughs> Yeah, it's possible. Okay. It's very possible. <laughs> huh. Interesting. All I know is I know that uh, you're not a fan of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but I think we can all agree that Karen Allen definitely held up pretty well over the years. Margot Kidder most likely has not. <laughs> Actually, I did see Margot Kidder probably about 
eight years ago? No, it's, it's been sooner than that. I saw her at a horror convention. Yeah, so... Oh, oh yeah. 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 She was at uh, Horror Hound a couple of years ago. She looks a little rough, but she I think... a little rough, yeah. I think years of alcohol and then mental disorders right. and medications and stuff like that, I and, think. Oh, yeah. And cigarette smoking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at, guess how we're going to look in 20 years. Right? Yeah. yeah. All three of us? We're yeah. going to look great. <laughs> I think Edna might look all right. But Edna, not, will look, not us. Edna will look okay, but the three of us, we don't smoke. We don't sure. drink that much. No. We're, we are the pictures of health, the three of us. <laughs> yes, we <laughs> are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true <clears throat> but yeah then uh, Olivia Hussey mm-hmm. was uh, mm-hmm. also in this movie she's great yeah I, she, uh, I enjoy me some Olivia Hussey most famous for uh, playing Juliet in the I believe 60's Romeo and Juliet which uh, was famously banned at my school because she shows her boobs yeah <laughs> For me, she will always be uh, Mrs. Bates from Psycho 4. Ah. She plays Psycho Mrs. Bates Four. in Psycho 4. <laughs> I stopped watching that movie after one. Uh, I love the Psycho movies. I, I love the first one, yeah. I love all of them. Although I did see three at some point in time. Yeah. And I tried to watch Bates Motel, which was just a mistake. I have not tried on that one yet. <laughs> no. I like the... Uh, I like the movies too much, so eventually I'll get to the TV show, but... Pretty much you're just waiting for, hey, when's Norman gonna fuck Norma? (laughs) Uh, So who else was... Oh, the dad from... uh, John Saxon? Yeah. John Saxon. From Enter the Dragon as well. Exactly. Martial arts expert. (laughs) Is he? Yeah, Yeah, he's in Enter the Dragon. Uh, I've never seen it. Oh, man, Jason, you're killing me. He was also in an episode of The Rockford Files where he played a martial arts expert. (laughs) So he either plays a cop or a martial arts expert. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So what we're trying to say is John Saxon is a martial arts expert. He and was a, also maybe a cop. A cop. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, born for those roles. In this one, he shows off his cop skills. Yes, he does. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, he does a lot of bone detection. Oh, he does. Uh, yeah, he does do a lot of just sitting. Some gripping phone detection. Yep, yep. Well, my, my guess would be is that they probably had him for like a day or two, right. and most of it was one set, so they could just hammer it all out. Yeah. Right. And uh, Andrea Martin, famous from uh, SCTV. No, is that the dude that was trying to trace the phone call? No. Okay. Andrea Martin. I don't know. Is, is a yeah. woman's name? It's Canadian. It could be anything. <laughs> <laughs> So, Kier Dulia is in the movie. Who, I don't uh, know either. He's Dave from 2001. Oh, really? Yeah. Which one was he? Dave. I mean, in this movie. Oh, he was uh, the piano player guy, Peter. Really? Yep. That was Dave? That was Dave. Wow. <laughs> Dave, that... what are you doing with your career, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still think my favorite, no. one of my favorite no. characters is the guy who plays Santa for the children. Oh, he's great. <laughs> who literally his whole lines is, ho, 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 shit. <laughs> ho, 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 fuck. It's like they would have asked me to be Santa. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't. Edna, calm your shit down. <laughs> She's just excited to be on the show. This is our first canine guest. Unless you count Jeremy Hoyt. <laughs> uh, attacked. No, Ed. Lord. Ed, no. She's out of control tonight. She does not want us to talk about Black Christmas. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> so, so should we talk about what we liked about Black Christmas? Yes. Okay. Well, I liked most of it. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, I did. That's I, more than I liked. I enjoyed this movie quite a bit, actually. Yeah. Uh, I'm with Eric. <laughs> I like parts of this movie, but. Those parts are small and few and far between. <laughs> well, let's hear what the few um, are that you did enjoy. I, I really liked, I think my favorite part was the uh, POV crazy shots of the killer. Like, I thought that was done really well. And it wasn't just like, you know, your typical slasher POV shot where he's just lumbering around. It was like, you really felt like this guy was insane. <clears throat> like, the way he was just thrashing around, knocking shit over, and just, you know, 
creeping around and it just it felt really interesting and and, and unique. I mean, I recently watched a movie where there was a POV shot, uh, <laughs> and this was masterfully done uh, compared to that other film. Okay. Uh, yeah. Where apparently someone just uh, held a gun underneath the camera so that you could just see the barrel uh, of the gun. Uh, but they, the doom shot, if you yeah. will. <laughs> but, but they were just pointing at a wall pretty much the entire time and not really doing anything. Are you sure you weren't just playing Goldeneye? No, I was watching a movie. Like oh. Something that somebody actually put to film <laughs> and showed to others. I, I liked Proudly that. showed to others. <laughs> I, I liked that a lot. And I, I liked the general just feel the look of the film. Like the uh like it wasn't quite grainy, but it had like this kind of odd I mean, it might just be like seventies film. It was, yeah, I mean, it was probably just age. But yeah, yeah I think the colors, cool. like it looked cool, the colors, everything looked really neat. Like I was impressed with that i like the the phone call aspect too a lot the the multiple voices where the guy would call and right. do multiple voices on the phone stuff that i think added to the creepy level of it as well i personally was uh fascinated by an aspect of it and i think jason was as well uh but th- there was a little bit of a of an educational aspect to this movie yeah in which we learned how detectives in the 70s would trace phone calls <laughs> yeah they physically <laughs> trace them they run around there's a giant warehouse full of like wires switch and the switchboards right, and, yeah. and they run around looking for the one that has the other uh call on the other line yeah it's fascinating i did not know that i did that not either not entirely sure that is how it works. Me but neither. <laughs> if they went to the that that uh, that effort to show us, I'm gonna guess it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, maybe we can neither confirm nor deny that that's how that happens. Yeah, yeah, no, it was yeah, it was a little strange. <laughs> it was very strange. Like yeah, because they're trying to trace the phone call of this killer, and the cop is like, "I'll be at the uh, the switchboard," and I thought maybe he would just like it would light up and like you know, right. kind of tell him what area it was coming from, but he's like literally running around, like picking up switches, listening to see what, what voices on the other line on on that switch, like all over this giant warehouse full of, it was bizarre. It was. Uh, I think we're just too used to, you know, these newfangled uh, computers and stuff that they use to trace phone calls in your, in your CSIs and your (laughs) NCISs. Right. (laughs) I think another aspect that works is the most of the girls are likable. And it has yeah. a kind of like a dark comedy aspect to it, too. There's moments that they only, throw in that are intentionally supposed to be kind of funny. I feel like only in the first fourth of the movie. I don't know, because the, the, the bumbling guys that come to the door and... I laughed quite a bit throughout. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the bumbling guys are late in the film, but I feel like 80% of the comedy is in the first, like, 20 minutes in the movie. No, I think it spread out. I mean, there's definitely a lot more at the beginning, but, you know, especially when Margot Kidder is at full force. And, and, full and, drunken and, force. Yeah. And Mrs. Mack, the, the, the like, marm lady. Yeah, the, the house mom. She's yeah. like a cross between Mrs. Garrett from Facts of Life <laughs> and Hunter S. Thompson. And the penguin. <laughs> yeah, and the penguin from uh, Adam West Batman. Who drinks a lot of booze. Yeah. <laughs> well, who doesn't? <laughs> Yeah, she was funny, but like I, I, yeah, I swear, like some of those scenes were like straight up comedy, like Laurel and Hardy style mm-hmm. of comedy. Right. I think you know there's definitely an imbalance between you know the the comedy and the the horror, but yeah. you know, I think I think it was peppered enough throughout that you know I, I enjoyed it you know for what it was, and I think Bob Clark also is is you know he's got a pretty strong ear for comedy, right? You know, even his horror movies have a dark comedy yeah. aspect to them. Like children, you know, shouldn't play with dead things. This is kind of hilarious in parts mm-hmm. and intentionally. So, and did this come before or after? Mm, God, 74. What was, I think it's after, I think children's would have came before. Okay. Cause I think children's was what? Um, 72. I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, which is weird. Cause I feel like he maybe had a better grasp on how to balance horror and comedy in that one, and with this one, not so much. Yeah. But he didn't write this one either. No. So, and you gotta think this was <clears throat> the beginning of the slasher craze. Yeah, because I mean, it's 
came out the same year as Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original, right. and it predates Halloween, it predates Friday the 13th, and it does a good job of taking the slasher <laughs> killer, hiding the face, hiding its his identity, everything's point of view shot. When it's not point of view shot, you're only getting glimpses mostly right. of his eyes right. in dark. That is one aspect of this that I really enjoyed, is that they do not explain the killer at yeah, all. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we never know why he's there, who he is, why he's doing what he's doing. And did you catch he kept saying different names? He was different names, too, because he would say Billy at but some it was times. mostly and, Billy. Yeah. Like, I don't ever recall hearing any other, but... And then he would claim that whoever he was talking to was some other girl name that yeah. he would be like, we can't tell him. And it sounded like Agnes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was hard to hear sometimes. Uh, partially well, and it was chaotic too. It's chaotic right. and you know seventies and you know deteriorated sound and also dog playing constantly. <laughs> <All right>. Yeah, <laughs> she's got a lot of energy. Yeah, and even the cat was acting up today, which yeah. is totally unlike uh, you. Yeah, he, yeah, <laughs> he was showing off. Again, <laughs> Matt Brassfield was here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all get a little excited. I know. <laughs> it's, it must be the Axe body spray. <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be it. I don't know. I honestly, I found it boring. Uh, it's slow in parts for sure. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think I would ever watch it again. See, and I like the beginning part, which a lot of people would say is slow, but to me, it's a little chaotic, like Christmas time. Right. People are gearing up to leave. People are trying to exchange presents. There's I, phone calls. I, there's I, family. I, there's this. Hey, come do this. I really like the beginning. Like, if more of the second or, or like if the if the i think the middle of the movie suffers from being a little slow in places uh because yeah i like the beginning of it as well yeah uh, but then after like the first kill because i mean the movie opens with our killer entering the house right yeah you know but then it's also in the midst of this christmas party and whatever else is happening and then you know just you know the mystery of what's happened to this girl is going on yeah but then after that, like nothing happens for a while. Yeah, and it, it is a lot of it is you know a little bit of forced comedy with you know the the Mrs. Mack and <laughs> right. you know. well, and then at the middle section really is, is the the first murdered victim's father trying to yeah, find yeah. his missing daughter, and that takes a large portion of it. And then the girls starting to wonder what is going on and why, right? You know, their friends the missing, and right. And in the midst of this, there's also you know prank phone calls happening, and you know they're trying to figure out that aspect of it. And Olivia yeah. Hussey has drama with her boyfriend. Yep, with uh, Dave from 2001. <laughs> drama. Uh, yep. Uh, he wants to go up on that space station, and uh, she won't let him. That's <laughs> no. <laughs> She doesn't want little Norman. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> a uh, pregnancy aspect that sort of comes out of nowhere, like a plot line that just it's like, what about the baby? And I'm like, what? What about the baby? What baby? Hey, do you think they were just trying to fill some scenes, or is that just to, no, I to think flesh it, out the characters? I think it flesh out the characters. Well, my opinion is flesh out the characters and then add a new level of the creepiness to try to make Dave the red herring. Right. Because then the phone call person starts using the terms, don't kill the baby, and what about the baby, and that right. kind of stuff. And crying like a baby in between. Right. Acting like a mother and father fighting with each other, and... So I think it just became more of a uh, eerie plot twist, mm -hmm. so that they could add another layer of creepiness yeah. to the killer. So Build up uh, Peter as you know a false yep. suspect. So I don't know if we really said, but it, it it's yeah, it takes place Christmas. It's a horror movie. It basically revolves around this one sorority house where yeah. where women keep um, disappearing or running into people right. and, uh, and and being killed. Uh, and, and the Christmas aspect is, is almost incidental. Like, you know, I mean, it's called Black Christmas, but literally... There's it Christmas be, lights, and that's about it. Right, but this could literally <laughs> just be called Black, you know, Spring Break. Right, or, yeah. 
Black Winter Break. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the Christmas aspect almost has no bearing. Like, you know, nobody is an evil Santa or right. anything like yeah. that. Well, yeah, there is. Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is essentially a pointless scene. <laughs> Just watch Margot Kidder get an underage kid drunk. <laughs> that is pretty funny, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, Margot Kidder, you're the best. <laughs> Yeah, but I liked it. I've nice. always liked it. I seen it on cable when I was a kid. I, I think maybe if I had seen it when I was younger, I might have a little bit built-in nostalgia for it. But yeah, I found it most of all just boring. Yeah, I mean, I felt myself getting a little bit sleepy, you know, during the sort of uh, latter third of it. But I, overall, I think I really enjoyed the entire thing. Mm-hmm. I think uh, I would like to watch it again, you know, under. Slightly more ideal circumstances. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. You mean being baked. You like to watch movies. Oh, baked. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And also not, you know, spending the first 30 minutes looking out the door to make sure. Our Chinese delivery guy was here. <laughs> right. Yeah. They, yeah. We ordered Chinese about 20 minutes before we started the movie. And uh, about an hour into the movie, it showed up. Yeah, and it was like 30 minutes yeah. into the movie. Yeah. Uh, it felt like an hour. <laughs> I was so hungry. That was probably part of it. Yeah, maybe that's why you didn't uh, enjoy the movie. It's possible. Yeah. If I have a full belly, I enjoy entertainment more. Sure. sure. Who doesn't? That's why they always have you fill out surveys after you've eaten. Like right. if you go somewhere and you know, there's a survey involved. Right. It's usually after you eat. <laughs> but to me, I think the acting works. The killer works. Uh, the use of soundtrack works, which is very little. A lot of it's just ambient noise, yeah. phone ringing, yeah. uh, wind, that Actually, kind of stuff. Actually, uh, especially you know in the very last scene of the movie, which you know, I mean, yeah, it's a forty-year-old movie at right. this point. So fuck it. You know, basically, uh, the wrong killer has been caught, and we know that the real killer is still lurking around in the house. Right. Uh, and our our victim, our final girl, you know, is is you know medicated because she's been through a lot of stress and trauma, and basically all the people who are supposed to be there protecting her basically leave, and the entire scene has like an almost Robert Altman feel to it, where it's just like a lot of overlapping talking, yeah, and like you can hear like people like in rooms that we not even privy to you know having conversations while our main characters are talking as well uh kind of like you know we're having a conversation here and you can hear a dog (laughs) chewing on a bone (laughs) and laying on my legs (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean yeah there's elements that are interesting about it but i don't know I will say that uh, these are some of the worst goddamn cops I've ever seen in any movie. Well, yeah, the fact that they didn't check the attic where right. other dead bodies are. <laughs> yeah. Right. There's still a missing girl. Like, her father is still hanging out, yeah. waiting to find out what's happened to her. Right. And no closure for that guy. No closure for that guy. Apparently, he has some sort of heart attack. He goes in the shot. Right. Passes out. Uh, but, yeah, the, you know, that girl's missing, and the, uh, the, the, the school marm is missing. Uh, but they're right upstairs. They don't check the attic. No. Why would you think to look there? Well, the the, the school mom they thought left because she told them that she was leaving. Uh-uh. So, but still, that's another body that's upstairs that they should have checked the the attic. So yeah, what yeah. what this movie says is the cops in that town are useless. Yeah. <laughs> well, the detective's more worried about Freddy Krueger than. Yeah, that it's is true. true. Yeah. Well, it's because his daughter is you know, directly affected by that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, and his deputy is an idiot. Yeah. Felicio. Yeah. <laughs> it's a new call sign. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I enjoyed this movie. But, yeah. I did too. I guess it was okay. Yeah. But that's, guess, a, that's, oh, that's, about, that's about the highest praise I can give it. He's, <laughs> he's changing his stance. <laughs> I, I, still, I still doubt if I would ever watch it again. But So, on one to four bar facts... <laughs> If we're, yeah, if we're doing this in the living room of war, one to four barf bags, Jason, what would you give it? Oh, one, for sure. Yeah. Eric, Schomborn, what would you give Black Christmas? Two and a half. Two and a half. I would probably give it two and a half, three. 
So me and Eric are right on. Jason, you are the weakest link at this point. Edna, how many... Uh... <laughs> Don't say that. She might actually just barf. She says four. <laughs> Edna loved it. She, she loved it. It excited her very much. She's wagging her tail. So, yeah. <laughs> Alright, you want to take a small break here? Merry Christmas. Christmas. Can't think of any other couple of fellas and, and canine I'd rather be <laughs> spending my Christmas with. Well, that's good. Aww. Well, thank you. <laughs> it makes me feel warm and fuzzy. Yeah, I feel warm and fuzzy. Somebody good. loves me. You've had a couple of beers. I've had so. a couple of beers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, it's Christmas time. It is. Yeah, I know we, we've done this a lot, so our, our stories probably don't change that much about right. it. Christmas and Christmas memories, but you know, we got any plans happening? Not me, just just taking it easy. No, no traveling, just just a low key Christmas with mom and my brother, and your dog, and and my dog, Ed. 
My Christmas plans are pretty much the same as Jason's. Low key, just gonna hang out with my family, mom and dad, and brother, and his wife and daughter, and my girlfriend Juliet. That's yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do not have a girlfriend this year, so I will not be doing anything like that. Uh, but I will be going to my parents' house and hanging out there pretty much to escape uh, the crushing loneliness that I would normally feel. And free food. And free food. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually, I am doing a little traveling. On Saturday, I'm going to go to Indianapolis to visit my brother and also come back the same day. But, That's uh, cool. Nice. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, pretty low-key myself. Uh, yeah. Low-key Christmases. Low-key. As guardians. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to ask you guys a question. I always oh, like doing no, this. No. no. So what was... Your guys' favorite Christmas present that you ever got on Christmas Day. Ooh, that's a tough one. I think my brother and I got a joint Christmas present. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we got a joint. Our parents were like, you're 14. You might as well be smoking weed. No, I, uh, I think they gave us a present that was like for us to share. It was the G.I. Joe headquarters nice. one Christmas. Yeah. That was pretty amazing. Did you guys share it, or was there a lot of fighting? No, we it? did. Yeah, we were we were good sharers. Well, that's good. Yeah. Same with me and my brother. We've always been good yeah. at because he's only three years older, so mm -hmm. it's like not that big of an age difference, right? How about you, Eric? Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I don't. My brothers were like twenty years older than me. You know, when I was a kid, so no, no. Memories like that, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I got a Nintendo once for Christmas, and that was probably the best one, or at least the one that I was most excited about. Uh, but actually, like, if, like, as far as, like, something that makes me feel good thinking about, you know, getting it, uh, actually happened last year and yesterday. Uh, last year, uh, my, my girlfriend at the time, you know, the, like I said, we're not together right now, but you know, she still gave me probably one of the best Christmas gifts that I've ever received just because of the meaning behind it. I don't want to talk about dirty stuff on this podcast. No, it's not dirty. Oh, okay. Uh, but she, she got me uh Hawkeye number one, the, uh, Matt Fraction and, uh, David Aha. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, series. I used to have a copy of uh, issue number one and it, uh, disappeared and uh, under uh, dubious uh, right, uh, right. means and uh, she uh, went out and found me a replacement and that was probably the sweetest thing that I've ever gotten. That was nice. It's very uh, thoughtful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then actually yesterday uh, Jason and I both uh, volunteer at a uh, place called Weaker Arts. Mm -hmm. uh, not together uh, but, but I, I'm there on Tuesday evenings. And uh, one of the uh, the kids that I work with uh, pretty much every week uh, is a kid by the name of Paul, and you know, he's he's uh, got some severe you know developmental dis disabilities, and uh, he was not there yesterday, but his mom came in and gave me a present. Aww. from Paul. That's cool. For, That's awesome. Basically, for you know working with him every week. That's cool. I feel all warm inside right yeah. now. Yeah, that is awesome. Uh, and it's not a thing that I'll probably ever use. Like I'll probably wind up just giving it to somebody. It was, uh, I mean, it's nothing big either. It was just, uh, it was a uh, hot cocoa mix. Oh, that's neat though. Yeah. Yeah. That's but, but it just kind of punched me like right in the heart. Yeah. And I was just like, Oh, right. Yeah. Well, it shows that you, you working with him means something to him that yeah. he thought that's about awesome. getting you something, yeah. no matter how big or small or whatever. Was it was the thought cool. definitely on that. Yep. It was pretty great. That was really cool. Yeah. I bet it pales in comparison to the present I got you. Oh? <laughs> pales. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so Jason uh, pulled out some packages here. I always pull out my package when we do that. Sadly, the, it was not his dick this right. time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, God. You can't win them all, Eric Seanborn. <laughs> Damn it. I need a win. <laughs> Uh, uh, but yeah, there's uh, one for me and one for Matt. Yeah, before and the show, I started to give you guys gifts, and you had the brilliant idea of 
opening them on the show. Yeah, why not? This is this is not unlike Geraldo opening uh, <laughs> Al Capone's. Al Capone's. Uh, I started to say King Tut's tomb. <laughs> I don't think that's what he did. Uh, no, he did not do that. <laughs> But uh, we'll go ahead and uh, let our guest open his first. I'm gonna let my dog out. Why you do that? All right, all right. Do you just want to open them at the same time? No, you're gonna open up yours first and uh, keep the paper away from the mic. It's probably good advice. I have gotten from Mr. Jason Young the Amazing Spider-Man newspaper strips, paperback book, and. <laughs> Move this King Kong Bunday comic <laughs> issue one and two. The complete series. Why, thank you, sir. <laughs> I can tell you this much right now. I will do a blog update about King Kong Bunday and dedicate it to you. Awesome. Do you have either of those? Items? I do not. Okay. Did you know those existed? I did not. Awesome. <laughs> That's what we like to see. Wow. King Kong Bunday. <laughs> For those that don't know who King Kong Bundy is, he is a gigantic wrestler from the 80s. Oh, he was a big guy, big bald guy. You know what's weird? I kind of flipped through those. Um, you know, it's it's pretty, like, it reminds me of those rock and roll comics as far as, like, oh, that's awesome. you know, the quality. I mean, like, that's not supposed to be an insult. It's just no, not, yeah. not, not, like, high professional quality. But in the back, there's a pinup section, and, you know, and the pinups kind of follow suit. There's just some odds and ends. Except for there's one by Ron Friends. Huh. Like, just like this Marvel artist did <laughs> did one of the pinups of King Kong Bundy. Wow. He must really love King Kong yeah, Bundy as awesome. much as I do. Yeah. Or they were able to mate his, uh, his commission rate. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, know. Jason Young. That's very cool. You're very welcome. Those are two of the most Matt Brashfield appropriate <laughs> gifts he right? probably it could have gotten. It is true. Got. Amazing right. Spider-Man paperback and King Kong Bunday. That is very... Uh, Spidey's in full color, too. I see that. Yeah. <laughs> The best is it's, it's the good. newspaper ones, too. I know. It smells like it, too. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. The classic rotten ink smell. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty cool. All right. Yours might not be as exciting. It's oh, more it's, it's more utilitarian. That's uh, usually how things go for me. Uh, it's the Big John Stud comic series. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was. It could be any wrestler comic series, and I would have the exact same reaction. <laughs> oh, he's opening the package. He is indeed. Uh -huh. It's comic books. It, it is. That's all I know. That's all you need to know, right? <laughs> nice. I have three... Blank variant sketch covers. Yeah, I know you like to do the sketches. I do indeed, and I, I love the paper that these things oh, are made on. Such pretty paper. Uh, we got a Batman sixty six, which is actually my third Batman sixty six <laughs> blank right, variant, right. which is one thousand percent okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I saw it at a store a couple months ago. I was like, ah, do I need another one? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, wrestled with it. Oh, you are into wrestling then. I am. Yeah. <laughs> And I got a uh, G.I. Joe number one, which uh, from IDW. Uh, now, I will say this. Uh, I, this is bagged and board, so I'm not going to open it right now. But uh, I recently got a Judge Dredd uh, blank variant cover. This is the same way. Same way? Yeah. All right, yeah. The Marvel and DC, when they do blank covers, uh, it's front and back. Wrap around. Uh, you know, so I can draw on the front and the back cover. With the IDW, they only do the front cover blank. <sighs> And Cheeks, it's, it's ads on the back, yeah. but still, hey, GI Joe. I've I been, uh, I thought I thought you liked GI Joe. You've been rewatching GI Joe cartoons, right? I, a couple years ago, I yeah. rewatched all the the classic ones, yeah. and uh, you know, I think there was like a span of like a month where your blog had a lot of GI Joe, I, guys. mostly oh, yeah. by your request. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. So, but I was totally down with drawing it. <laughs> so who's going on that cover? Roadblock, oh. shipwreck, oh, he'll gung ho. Think about that one. Oh yeah, I don't know. Stalker. Shipwreck's one of my absolute favorites. <laughs> I mean, you know, my my goal with these blank covers is, you know, that somebody would say, hey, I would like to pay you to draw this on this cover, and then I would draw that on the cover. Well, listener, now is your time. Okay, to, uh, there you go. You, so far, you have Batman 66 or G.I. Joe to right. choose from. 
And also, I now have an X Men giant size. I, I I went with the giant size because it just seemed sure. You know, more perfect. I mean, when we're talking giant size comics, though, I definitely prefer Man Thing. <laughs> right. You giant sized Man Thing. But I'll take a giant size X Men and a giant size X Men number one. That's the first appearance of the all new X Men. Yeah, it's worth about. Two thousand dollars, right? And this one had a blank variant. Yeah. That's amazing. Back in nineteen seventy four, they three. were visionaries. Who uh, knew they did those blank variant I, I, covers back then? I didn't. Chris Claremont knew what the fuck was going to happen. <laughs> He's seen the future. <laughs> yeah, there was no Sovereign Seven blank variant because <laughs> Chris Claremont knew the future. Yeah, right. He's like, nobody's going to draw a Sovereign Seven ten years from now. <laughs> Not even the guy I hired to work on this book. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Oh, you're very welcome. Those will most likely all get drawn on at some point. Sweet. That's why I look forward to seeing yeah. Especially the G.I. Joe one. I'm always excited to see yeah. draw G.I. Joe mm-hmm. characters. You know, like I said, uh, if somebody maybe, wants to pay me to draw maybe, something... Maybe I can yeah. buy it back from you. Could be. <laughs> or uh, if that doesn't happen, I'm more than happy to just draw any requests that you would have. Oh, yeah. okay. You just said shipwreck. Uh, and I have drawn Superman yeah, for you. Yeah, you have. <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> well, uh, we didn't know this was happening, so neither Matt nor I brought anything for you. Well, that's okay. You I just, brought my friendship. Your, your mere presence in my home and your toleration of my canine <laughs> is, is present enough. But yeah, I'll definitely... Uh... Do a blog update on King Kong, but yeah, before yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm pretty sure that's the entire series. There might be another one, but it looked like it was. So. Cool. Yeah. I'll see if I can. Uh, I'll do some research. See how many more <laughs> are in it. Sweet. So he was he was always a villain, right? King Kong. Bundy? Yes. Yeah. Because a lot of wrestlers just kind of switch sides. He, what are the, do they have a name for that? Uh, just good guy or heel. Right. Yeah. But or I mean, face or heel, basically. They don't have a name for when they toggle. From nah. One to, okay. Uh, whore. <laughs> King Kong Bundy was also in Richard Pryor's moving. You guys oh, remember yeah. that? Oh, yeah. I actually watched that not that long ago. That's a great movie. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> King Kong Bundy was in it. I wouldn't have known him if, uh, <laughs> if there would have been a giant flashing, uh, you know, superimposed... King Kong Bundy with an arrow pointing right at him. I still wouldn't have pointed him out. <laughs> did you know that before tonight? Did you know there was a man named King Kong Bundy? I had heard the name. Okay. Yes, okay. And, and would have known him as a wrestler. Yeah. It was classic, <laughs> classic eighties <laughs> bad guy. Gazoon said. So. Thank you. He reminds me of uh, King Hippo from Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Oh, yeah, I think that's probably where they got that. That's yeah. <laughs> probably where they got that. So what else is going on, guys? Eh, not much. What you guys working on? What you guys doing? We're drawing. Yeah, you're drawing. I'm really not. Eric's I, really not, I but just, Jason's drawing. I, I just finished up my very first all-full-color comic. Nice. Um, it's a split comic with a, an artist named Ken Mentor from Lexington, Kentucky, USA. And uh, we each wrote a story for the other to draw. They're just like five-page stories, so it's not... Not huge, but I've never drawn a full color <clears throat> entire strip, so I was it was really fun. It was fun when's it do. when's it coming out? Um, I think either in January or February. I, I hope in January that way I can have it to take to ICE. And oh, they, nice. Yeah. Would or can they get it? Like, can people get it for, through your website or his, or um, is it both? Or? It should be both. Uh, cool. Once it comes out, we haven't figured all that out yet because he's doing all the printing. Um, I just sent them all the files, so my 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 share is done. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just waiting on the books to arrive in the mail. Come on, Eric, you got to be doing something. Eh, I got nothing. I literally have nothing. Uh, I've I have not been able to get much work done in the past month or so, and it's a little frustrating. But it's, uh, you know, yeah, I've, I've just I've got nothing. Just just desperately, desperately. Trying to find commissions when I can, and, and uh, no biters. No biters. Uh, Edna will bite. Oh, she'll bite, yeah. but she won't pay for anything. Oh, no. Well, no. Goo, on the other hand, he will pay before he bites. Yeah, see? He's, he's considerate, like most cats. Yeah, Edna's just cheap. 
Yep, like where, all dogs. What are you working on, Mr. Brasby? Oh, um, still doing on? updates for my blog on Rotten Inc. Um, working on a comic project with you, but I don't think you want to announce it quite yet. Well, it's a super secret project. It's a super secret. So we're working on a comic project. Um, still shooting Baron Von Porkchop's Terrifying Tales of the Macabre. Um, you gonna be uh, making a new movie called Wolf Hunter Three anytime soon? I will not be, but I did have talks with the director Matt Hoffman about possibly having him make another Wolf Hunter motion picture, which you watched with us. I did on our podcast not yeah, too long ago, and you enjoyed it. You should should mention the fact that you now have a podcast of your own. I do have a podcast of my own. Uh, it's called The Living Room of Horror. Um, it's has, me. Hasn't launched yet, has it? Has not okay. launched yet. Okay. Um, it's me, uh, my cousin Steven Alexander, and my friend Josh Weinberg, and occasionally special guests, which you, Jason, have special guests on two of them so far. That's right. And Eric has special guests on one, and has even came over and just hung out and watched us record it and watched the movies with us. Yeah, on those two episodes, you'll probably hear me laughing in the background like if I was Paul F. Tompkins or somebody. <laughs> He was our Ed McMahon do you that chew, night. Do you chew on any bones or anything in the back? Uh, no. Because no. people love that. I, people will tune in for that. I maybe took a sip from a bottle of pop that you might be able to pick uh, up. That's I, kind of similar. It's in the same, same and Like I said, genre. I did laugh and, and wheezed a couple times, but uh, no, I did not chew on any bones or jump up and down or <laughs> lay on Matt Brasfield's legs. Aww. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Much to your disappointment. I know. I know. He didn't want to move our uh, recording device because I have to wear headphones and it moves the <laughs> recording device. So he just didn't. He didn't want to ruin the show. Maybe next or, time. Maybe, maybe next, next time. time. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope I'm uh, going to be a guest again at some point because I enjoyed myself. It is. Uh, it's very possible indeed. Yeah. We have. Uh, we have. Quite a bit of episodes in the can already, yeah. so we're just getting ready to. Uh, we're fine tuning some stuff, um, and then once we get it fine tuned, then. We're going to pass it around, let people listen to it, see what people think first before we do anything with it, and then we'll see where it happens. Nice. Yeah, that's weird, because most podcasts, uh, they just record it and put it out. I know. <laughs> I think, it, honestly, I think the reason it is, it's the uh, TV uh, director in me. Right. Because everything is fine-tuned. Well, this isn't TV. I know. <laughs> I can't break it. Just like it took me a long time when I was... Uh, first started shooting terrifying tales of the macabre i came from a background of shooting no budget and independent horror films so even my style and thought process of shooting that was still stuck in shooting independent horror films basically it does explain while because i didn't so much notice it the first time i was there as an, uh, an actual guest but uh being there as the audience uh for the last two episodes uh, i did notice it greatly that you talk to the audio recorder as if it were a television camera yep. and you look at it as if you're looking into the camera and you make motions to it yep. and you make motions to an invisible audience. Yep. And it's a little weird. But I'm not the only one because I noticed Steven does it too. Because Steve I does, think, but I think it's probably because of you a little bit. Or it's because he's, he does independent movies and shows with me, so I think too he... Yeah. Is kind of stuck. Weinberg's just in his own world. Well, I haven't been there for a Weinberg. <laughs> guessing I probably won't be. <laughs> Ed, no. There's uh, a uh, uh, the, dog, the, the first episode me. that I was there in the audience. It was just you and Steve. Yep. And then uh, second time it was uh, Maurice. Yep. Was was your guest? Yep. Uh, who was actually in the movie that you guys watched? Yep. That's cool uh, to have a guest from the movie. It was pretty fun listening to. Uh, well, I mean, we can say, because it's, it's further down the line, so we're going to ruin the surprise, but we watched uh, Wolf Hunter 2, oh, yeah. um, and Maurice played uh, Duke, one of the other Wolf Hunters, so it was nice to hear his um, stories of how he got hired and the process of making the film and stuff like that, especially since it was a no-budget movie, so it was interesting to hear some of his... Uh, yeah. His stories right, of the uh, behind the scenes stuff <laughs> of working with the director and such. <laughs> Those are always good. <laughs> it was a pretty entertaining show. Yeah, and also 
I have to say this because uh, because I did not get a chance at all to talk on your podcast about it because you wouldn't let me. Whatever. <laughs> but Wolf Hunter Two may be the greatest movie that I have ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> it rates up there. Wow. The best way to describe it is it's a beautiful disaster. I mean, it is it is of the quality of, of the room, right? Or you know, uh, Troll Two, even just just a horrible, horrible movie that I loved so damn much did, while watching it. Did you like my performance? I texted you yeah. in the middle of the movie <laughs> when you show up. I think you said I was crushing it. You killed it. That's yep. what you said. Yeah. <laughs> However, you still paled in comparison to one Joe Grunewald. Oh, he's great. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean this legitimately. He may have been the best actor in that movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, he's good. He's very good. He is legitimately good in that movie. He's very animated when he talks, too, in that sure. movie. That's what, that's what makes this scene. And you were I think you were in character, though. You were playing kind of a stoner, I'm guessing. Right. I was possibly stoned at the time. Right, yeah. Stoned yes. or drunk? We're not quite sure. <laughs> no, I think I was drunk, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I wasn't stoned, but I think I was drunk. <laughs> and it's always fun to revisit... Uh, uh, Jason haircuts of old. Oh yeah, what what was it in that one? Uh, swooped over to the side. All right. Yeah, <laughs> like eighties skater style, but Kinda, in the late nineties. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I would say probably mid two thousands. Yeah, probably two thousand. Yeah, probably <laughs> probably two thousand six. Yeah, that sounds right. There. Yeah. <laughs> I was bringing it back. <laughs> you were trying. Yeah. Sometimes that's all you can do. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, I feel like a Christmas miracle happened tonight. I think so, too. Yeah. Right in my in my heart. We watched Black Christmas. We got gifts. Edna chewed on bones and is finally yes. going to sleep <laughs> at the end of the podcast. Right, of hey course. Guys, can we restart? <laughs> now that she's asleep? Yeah. <laughs> I think that would just rile her up some more. <laughs> she's like, oh, they're starting again? Let me just go chew on everything in the house. <laughs> Including the cat, right? Yeah, that's which she has happened. been doing for like the last five minutes until yeah. she is now sleeping. He's pretty good about slapping her into place, though. Yeah, Goo, Goo is an old man. He is. he does not want to take any shit. No, <laughs> He's too old for that. Yeah, it's like it's it'd be like a five year old child wanting to play with a ninety year old man right? all day long. And he's just like fucking quit. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I'm old. And he's got no front claws, right. so he can't really even do <clears throat> Can't himself. really yeah, teach her a lesson. Right. Because, yeah, if he had claws, I'm sure she wouldn't be messing right. with him she'd at have, all She'd anymore. have a scarred up nose yeah. and <laughs> a better view on things. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, she's fucking adorable. Yeah, right? It's too bad this lasts about eight minutes per day. Right. She well, knows we're talking about her. Yeah. When Matt and I leave, we'll make sure we roll her back up. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> Look at that stare. Actually, I probably will walk her when you guys leave. Since it was like pouring the rain when we started, when we right before we did the show, so I haven't yeah. actually walked her. It's been a very rainy Christmas season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has. It's kind of a pain in the ass. We, we can make rain angels when we leave. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like my house, all my windows are open because it's warm out. Yeah, yeah, it's like t-shirt weather outside. Yeah, it is. And it's I think it was a little warm last Christmas as well, but you know. Not like this. It is weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so, uh, oh yeah, you know, Matt asked us what our best Christmas gifts were, but I don't think, oh. did you ever answer? I did not. Was it, was it your King Kong Bundy set that one year? <laughs> It was probably this year when I got King Kong Con- <laughs> Monday comic books. Uh, no, I have two that I would say would be, would be the coolest. Uh, first one was a shared one with my brother um, when we got our Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they got us, like, you know, games and such. And that was really cool. Um, and the second one's when we first got our VCR as oh, a family. Yeah. And it was the family present. Back when VCRs were, like, half a grand. Yeah. Great. And then the first movie that and they also bought me. as a microwave. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And the first movie that I got with when we got the um, VCR was Universal's Frankenstein. So oh, that nice. was really cool. That's perfect. That's perfect. 
Uh, yeah, very good. fitting. <laughs> yeah. So those are my two favorites. And then, of course, over the years, of, I can tell you when I got what Masters of the Universe figure <laughs> and, <laughs> and all that. All that jazz, but I don't want to bore you guys with that. Uh, uh, I'm sure that'll be a Rotten Ink podcast in Probably. the future. Or a Rotten Ink uh, post. In Probably. And I'm sure you still have them all too, right? No, I do not. Oh. I'm not on the Masters of the Universe. I, I kept some of them. Like, I still have, like, my original, like, Beast Man and, and, uh, He-Man, Skeletor. But some of those I gave, uh, I had a, a set of cousins that, um, like, their dad lost their job and all that. So they didn't have, like, a bunch of toys. So at one time I let, like gave them like a bunch mm. of toys that I had that I didn't play with anymore and that kind That's of thing. Awesome. I try. <laughs> nice. But those are my favorites. Cool. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, I think on that note, it's, uh, it's pretty positive and you know, it's a rarity for us. So <laughs> it's nice and quiet. With the it's top. nice and quiet now. So uh, we should drift off to. Uh... Chris, Christmas land, America oh, land. Okay. Is Santa on his way? He is. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, let's go bake some cookies. Thanks. Night. Not Sandman. Oh. Santa Man. Santa Man. Okay. All right. Well, uh, thanks for spending another Christmas with me. Yeah. Thanks for bringing the movie. Um, no, sorry. No sorry. And no, no, mean no personal offense by not enjoying it as much as you fellas. Oh, that's fine. Just, that's that's the joy of movies, music, comics, and everything else right. in life. The right. kind of people who would take a personal offense if you didn't <laughs> like the same thing that they liked are horrible people. Right. Right. It's not like I made Black Christmas. Right. <laughs> you yeah, were telling me it was right. terrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he just told you uh, Wolf Hunter 2 is terrible, but in a great way. I did. All I did is act as a werewolf right. in that right. thing. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think he knows. <laughs> But also, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are people out there. There, uh, I don't know if anybody's heard about this or not, but there's a new Star Wars movie. Out. There is, yeah, and uh, there are a certain faction of Star Wars fans who, if uh, they find out that you don't like Star Wars, take it as a great personal. Oh advice. yeah, oh yeah, that and, happens. Uh, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, and that is uh, stupid. Yeah. And there is something wrong with those people because, <laughs> in the end, just a movie, guys. Mm-hmm. It's true. And also, terrible movies. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, but I'm actually really excited to. Oh, well, yeah, I haven't seen the. Well, I haven't seen any since Phantom Menace, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you didn't miss much until. No, that's what until, I've heard. Until this one, probably. Yeah. You know what? That's fine, but I have zero interest. Yeah. Except, I did want to know what BB 8's mission was. And I had to pry it out of somebody, <laughs> but now I do. See? That's oh, you want you me want? to tell you what it is? Oh, I already no know spoilers. <laughs> Let me tell the whole movie to you. No. Can we just take the rest of this podcast and I'll just explain shot for shot what happened in the movie? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Start with the crawl. Okay. So the crawl. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you upset the fact that you know that there's a crawl there's now? There's a crawl in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Spoiler. All right. Well, now the cat's determined to fuck up the podcast, so we should probably just end it. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thank you for listening to Gutter Trash. You can subscribe to the show from guttertrash.net or from iTunes and leave us a review. Visit guttertrash.net for email information and for other podcasts and websites in the Gutter Trash Network. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.